Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Aino 1800. I am your matter today, and gentlemen. We're gonna take a look at the Docklands DLC. The first DLC of this third season pass for Aino 1800. Now, the first question that a lot of you are probably asking yourself, if you haven't get yourself the DLC yet, is it worth it? Uh, it depends. Just so you're gonna be completely aware of this thing, the DLC doesn't add that much of a new mechanic but it opens up on opportunities or maybe options to play the game a little bit differently what I mean by that uh, well just so you're gonna be aware of it uh, in my opinion the previous ANO actually offered up you a lot more options when it comes to trading right the biggest issue I had with 1800 was that it kind of didn't fulfill the purpose of trading, at least in my opinion. I haven't been able to make a good use of the trading. But now with the Docklands DLC, uh, a lot of new options actually open up and some very interesting options I may have to add. Now, first of all, you need to get yourself the DLC, obviously. And after you do, you have to go, you have to advance to the art distance levels. Once you're gonna do that, you have to go to the Medium Harbor and then you're gonna get yourself the Docklands Main Wharf. Now, this is a module building, so it's not a monument at, as a, let's say, uh, the World Fair, right? It's more of a, like a palace. The so you build yourself the main leadership. building and then you add wings to that building, right? That's how it works. This is an instant construction, stuff like that. You can, of course, build one per island. So as you can see, I got one over here on Crown Falls, my capital island. And then I got uh, one in Whetstone, which is one of my... Uh, bigger islands. This this is basically one of the main production hubs I have for the entirety of this region. Uh, and basically this is a region, an island actually, that has a lot of incoming ships. Incoming ships, departing ships, because this thing adds as a distribution center and a storage center and so on and so forth. And also I got like a lot of in, uh, industry over here. So building this thing over here is actually a very good idea second thing that you need to remember is that you cannot construct the main wharf next to the harbor ma uh, master office as you can see i cannot build it right I, c I cannot build it at all because well there's a good reason behind that thing uh simply because speaking the main wharf has the opportunity has the possibility to act as a harbor master office and a really cool thing that i think uh, is that the Main wharf doesn't cost you any influence points. It's zero. It's null. Nenada, right? But the harbor master office, the normal one that you normally use, costs you 20 uh, influence points. That's the first thing. The second thing that the influence range of the main wharf is actually a lot bigger. I don't know if we'll be able to see this thing because YouTube is gonna probably lower the quality of the video. Uh, but the smaller circle is the harbor office, the harbor master office, and the big one is of course the uh, main wharf building of the of the Docklands. So it's like huge. It's actually really, really big. And as I said, it opens up some other interesting options. So as I said, this is a module building. It adds you 100 tons of, of, of storage on the island. And also the building itself adds you 150 attractiveness points, right? If you're not aiming for the tourists, if you are not aiming for having a lot of museums and zoos, uh, then probably you're gonna ignore this thing completely. But sometimes it's good to have at least a bit of attractiveness on an island, right? Just in case, just in case, because you never know what you're gonna need. And also, if you don't have investors, yes, then increasing your attractiveness is another way to make money by building the public mornings, right? Uh, tourists will come to your islands and basically they're gonna generate income based on how attractive or unattractive your island is. So you build this thing and then what? Well, you got yourself this really cool ass, big ass button over here called modules. You click this thing and then you have modules. Now as you can see I've connected uh, all of the modules to the main wharf, right? But the cool thing about this is that I don't have to necessarily connect it, right? For example, I can build a uh, the, the, the harbor building over here or if I really want to I can build it over here and as you can see it's far away from the actual main wharf I think I can build it on the this different coast as well no I can't I have to build it on the same coast but I don't have to connect it right that's an interesting fa factor but if you will connect the building like I did over here then each additional module is gonna add you 15 attractiveness 
to the main building, right? So, for example, at the moment, this one is giving me 375, right? What's gonna happen if I'm gonna move one of them and let's say build them, I don't know, here? Then the attractiveness went down to 360, right? So that's how it works. Uh, another thing is that the modules open up some interesting opportunities. So you have the module for depot, which is basically a normal storehouse, but instead of adding uh, 50 storage, this one adds 100 storage. And also it's a lot smaller than the regular warehouse that you have to build uh, on your island in, in order to increase its uh, capacity when it comes to storage, right? So the warehouse, if I'm gonna actually, okay, hold a second, I'm gonna move this thing aside. Uh, hello, thank you game. Right, so this thing is this big, right? And if I'm gonna attach next to it the warehouse available for the main world building, as you can see, it's a lot smaller, right? A lot, a lot smaller. And of course, it adds more storage uh, to the entire island. Then you have, let's say, a pier. Yeah, the pier. The, bu the building that basically gives you uh, another slot for loading and unloading ships. Uh, then you have the repair crane. Yeah, the repair crane. And the interesting thing is that the normal repair crane costs you three influence points. This one doesn't cost you any influence. So, you know, another good thing to have, especially if you're struggling for influence points. Then you have the Harbor Master office. Now, this one acts a little bit differently. Because if you're gonna build this thing, uh, then it will increase the amount of items you can put in the Harbor Master in the main building. So that's why I have in total five over here. Normally you have three, but because I have built two additional Harbor Master's offices, then the total amount of people, the species I can put inside is five, right? And because of the range, it opens up interesting options. So right now, this thing is capable of uh, interacting with three different shipyards. And if I move the cannons a little bit around, then, for example, I can make a really strong defense point that almost no fleet will be capable of destroying. So it depends on what you're looking for, right? You if you're looking for a specific thing, then you can adjust the main harbor building to whatever you need. Uh, what else is uh, good over here? The loading wharf is also cool. It reduces the amount of time the ship will spend on loading and unlo unloading. They've added this thing over here. Basically, this thing tells you how quick the ship is getting loaded and unloaded, right? So at the moment, this one over here, this, this pier, uh, loads and unloads six tons of items per, per second, right? Those things over here, the, those are the advanced spears. If you don't know how to get the advanced spear, you have to, uh, you need to have the uh, land of the lion. You have to go to major discoveries, and you're gonna have this thing over here, pier upgrade permit. You have to research this thing. You build the normal pier, and then you get the option to upgrade it to the advanced spear. So as you can see, the advanced spear have it's eight tons per second, right? The main harbor building has four per second, and the normal standard warehouse that you have on each island is 10 per second, right? 10 tons per second. Uh, what else we have over here? Uh, let's see. We have the export office, which I'm gonna get into in a second. And of course you have... Actually, that's it. You don't have any more uh, more buildings over here. So, as I said, you can you can attach it if you really want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to attach it, but attaching it basically is gonna give you uh, additional attractiveness. Probably something else as well, but I haven't figured out it just yet. So, you know, that's like a work in progress. And over here, you have the amount of buildings, uh, building limits, right? So, you, when you're gonna start doing this thing for the first time, you're gonna have a limit per, I think, five, uh, five, three, two, I believe. Uh, Harbor Masters will be two, Loading Corps will be two, Exports Office will be two as well. So, probably wonder, okay, so how the hell you've managed to increase this thing? Well, it's the thing that you have to do in imports and exports. Now, as I said, there's an export office over here. One more building, one more module you can build. And this is the number of exports import contracts you can you can use to export goods. Okay? So basically, what this thing means, I have uh, two of those already on the island and I can build the third one. So if I'm gonna select this thing, you have this really big ass button over here. You click it, and then you get this. The uh, the exports and import menu. 
So I already did some of this during the first episode of the DLC, which means I have some things already unlocked. Normally you, you have the, all of this thing blocked, right? All, all of this thing is locked. Expect of potatoes, pigs, some grain, I think fish and schnapps over here, worker clothing and soaps over here, and the remaining, like all of it is blocked, right? So what you need to do is that you have to export resources. So for example, on this island, I am making shitloads of steam motors. I am making shitloads of pocket watches as a byproduct of a different uh, factory. And I'm making also as a byproduct gramophones, like a lot of them, right? So from this section, from the left section, you pick up the goods that you want to export. So in this example, let's say that I want to export something I'm producing over here. So maybe, 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 uh, I don't know, shrink machines, for example, right? So you put the shrink machines over here. And then you pick something from this section, right? So from, from the section that you can try to import. You cannot trade a penny for gold. You cannot trade for cash. You have to trade an item for an item, right? Goods for goods. So let's say I am exporting shrink machines and I want to import honey or bees, uh, bee wax or whatever this thing is, right? So the, the ratio is one to five. So that means for every one shrink machine that I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna get five beeswax, right? And this applies to every uh, every other thing. So if I'm gonna go back to exporting uh, the watches, as you see, the ratio changes, right? One to 15 and so on and so forth. Uh, what we had over here? I think we had wood over here, right? Where's the wood? Where's the wood? Where's the wood? Okay, there's the wood. So I want to export, let's say 50 watches. And in return, I'm gonna get 1,755 wood, which is necessary for my production, right? I'm getting this thing as a byproduct. But I need a lot of wood to maintain effectiveness of my factories. So as I said, this opens up some interesting options for you to try to trade around. So for example, you can try to import pigs. You don't want to build pig farms on your island your because that's gonna reduce attractiveness. So let's say that you will sell beer and in the turn you want to get yourself some pigs or maybe you want to get red pepper so you want, maybe you want to get something different that's how it works it opens up very interesting options because later on you have the possibility to even import chocolate coffee cigars uh cotton fabrics maybe you want to import let's say furs which basically means that the arctic becomes even less useful ha 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 uh, if you want to coconut oil, you can also import. So, gold, gold bars. I'm actually gonna export gold bars because I have so much of them, I don't even know what to do with all of my gold bars. That's how much I've got of those, right? So, it opens up opportunities for you that you don't even have to go to the new world in order to get the resources necessary to uh, basically advance to the artisan's level, later on to the engineering level, and later on to the investor's level, right? So. Yeah, like, if you want to try something new, I'm guessing Docklands is actually a DLC for you. And that's, that, that rhyme, that's cool. Now, there's one more thing that I want to discuss. Uh, obviously, as you see, I got three different contracts I can try to open. And if I'm gonna build, if I'm gonna build uh, the Xbox office, let's just slap it anywhere. And I'm gonna return over here. The fourth uh, trading offer has have opened up for me. So that means I can now export and import fourth good for this island, right? And this applies only to this one island, which is awesome. Now, this pyramid over here, this is even more interesting. So, you keep exporting goods, right? You keep exporting goods. At the moment, I am leading exporter of panchos because I've sold above 1,000 of those. I am also selling uh, the fur coats. I'm also selling, as you see, images over here. Uh, pocket watches and gramophones. So once this thing is gonna hit 1,000, they also will appear over here. Now what this thing means... Actually, I'm gonna go on the island that I'm exporting this thing from. So it's over here. Ah, see? I'm exporting panchos from this island. So I'm exporting panchos and in turn I'm getting myself some clay, which is necessary for an embassy. And what this thing means is that I've exported above 1,000 panchos. And because of that, the game have acknowledged that and put at me as a uh, as a specialist, right? As you see over here, use specialty exports. So once you're gonna export a set amount of goods, then your specialty in that thing is gonna increase. So later on, I can try to get to 2,500, 
then to 4,000, and then to 7,000, right? And with each new level, more buildings for my harbor, for my dock, uh, dock, how you call this thing once again? The Docklands building is gonna increase. Right now, as you see, I got limits of depot. I can build seven depot buildings, right? And I cannot go above that. This city is a magnet but if I'll get myself the third level of speciality, place. then that amount is gonna increase by two. And also this thing increases the prices, right? So because I've sold 1,000 panchos, the prices of this thing have increased. So the ratio, this thing counts not as one, as it used to, but it counts as 1.2. This thing is worth 1.2 compared to some other like items. So the more you sell a particular item, the more expensive it's gonna eventually get. Which means that you're gonna get better prices. And so on and so forth. So yeah, th that's actually really bloody awesome. For example, I want to get this thing, right? I want to import uh, suits. So the suits are more expensive, obviously, than the shoes. But eventually the shoes could get really expensive and the ratio will be better for me, right? It won't be 2 to 1, it's gonna be 1 to 4, for example, and so on and so forth. So it depends, right? As I said, it opens up some very uh, interesting options you could try to play around with. Uh, is it worth it? Depends. Is it necessary? Not really. Is it fun to use? Yeah, it opens up some new interesting options. It opens up the opportunity to make your dog look more fancy. Uh, but then again, as I said, I kind of would like to have uh, that the main wharf would actually be upgraded version of the uh, of the main harbor, main warehouse of the island. Because right now I got the main warehouse, and it uh, I, I, it doesn't match us over here, right? I had to move it. I probably. Like on this side over here, probably I'm gonna slap you somewhere over here and see how that thing is gonna roll. So that's the only issue I have with this DLC so far. Is it worth it? As I said, it depends. If you have a few spare bucks, if you have invested more than 100, maybe more than 200 hours into the game, get the DLC. But only, only if you have uh, Crown Falls, uh, Sunken Treasures, sorry. And you have the land of the line. Like those two DLCs, in my personal opinion, are still a must-have for this game. If you if you have to buy a DLC, if you want to buy a DLC, get yourself uh, Crown Falls, uh, Second Treasure, I mean, and get yourself Land of the Lion. The third DLC that I recommend, like I highly recommend, is of course the Palace because it's a fucking palace. And the fourth DLC, so far, is the Docklands. The Docklands is usually at the moment, on my fourth uh, favorite uh, DLCs for uh, for Eno, I really really like it so far. Uh, I want to I want to advance my my harbors. I want to rebuild them. I actually want to put some fucking time over here. What the heck? Oh great, you don't have any flower, but that's awesome. So yeah, b this opens up an opportunity, right? So I can build this thing here, and now. I can order them to, let's say, export, uh, what I could try to export, I could try to export maybe pigs, which I'm, if I'm gonna find them actually, where are the pigs, hold on a second, export pigs, and in return, I want you to bring me flour, where the heck is flour, uh, maybe it's not, maybe it's not possible to actually buy it, no, I cannot buy it, I can buy, I can buy grain, but I cannot buy a plenty flour. I don't see it. I don't think that is actually possible. Maybe I'd, I'm just blind, but yeah, I don't see it over here. So, okay, you cannot trade everything, apparently. That's that's good to know <laughs> during the actual recording, right? So, yeah, uh, I'll leave the decision to you. If you want to get yourself the DLC, I'm gonna, of course, continue this thing doing the Let's Play videos. Uh, we're gonna try to rebuild the majority of the harbors around. Uh, but remember that it is actually recommended to build this thing on the on the bigger coastal line because this thing will take space uh, So don't try to for example well, Maybe you could try to squeeze it over here, but I don't think that you'll be able to protect it because uh, The harbor building doesn't have any uh, Any modules with actual defenses, right? You still have to build the defenses as a separated building I would actually would like to have a defense building that is attached Directly to the to the to the hardboy area. That would be probably very good. But yeah, anyway, I'm, I think I'm whining too much uh, for the game uh, at the moment. So I think I'm gonna leave this thing over here. And well, future episodes, more of the Docklands. But as I say, that's gonna be the thing for the future. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, 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 sub
in the next video.